Welcome back to the channel, folks. Been a little while. So, let's get a wrap on the ramps. And uh, let's get to work on the transmission. So you're gonna need some hose to siphon the fluid out of the transmission before you drop the pan and soak yourself in oil. I think I got some on my washing machine here. Perfect for the task. So let's go ahead and pull that dipstick out of the transmission. And stick it somewhere safe. Then we take our clean tube. You know, you don't want this thing roasting in the dirt before you stick it down the dipstick into the transmission. I recommend giving it a little twirly twist as you're pushing, just to make sure that you're not stuck on a bend. So now that we fed the tube down the dipstick, hook up one of these vacuum bleeders, or maybe if you have a pump, you could even use a regular pump. And you want to start pulling a vacuum. Once you get near the top, you're going to want to break the seal here, let the pressure out, because uh, especially on these cheap pumps, you do not want to be sucking any fluids in into the pump itself if you'll destroy the o-rings so now that you've got your full cup just dump it into your receptacle remember if you're trying to reuse this fluid you want to keep it clean and then once you've drained what you think is enough you pull the hose out put the dipstick in and you want the fluid to be down here well below like around this bottom hole or lower because the top of the pan is around the bottom of that hatch area maybe a little bit lower so as long as the fluid is lower than that, it won't come pouring out when you drop the pan. Now I'm not going to replace the filter in this video, but I would recommend you doing it. And as far as gaskets go, it depends on what's in there. If you have one of these metal core gaskets that they call reusable gaskets, you'll be totally fine. That's what I have, so I'm not changing the gasket either. But if you have one of the cheap paper ones or someone did RTV, you're definitely going to want to get a new gasket. You're also going to want to set the e-brake once you're up on the ramps because if you're dropping the pan and doing some work inside the transmission, putting it in park just ain't cutting it. Alright folks, here comes the exciting part. Now all the bolts are out of this pan and we're going to lower it down evenly. Alright, there's your money shot. Make sure you keep the pan under there so it doesn't, uh, you know, piss fluid all over the driveway. Plus, you want to collect as much of this fluid as you can in a clean container because it's fucking expensive. Any hoozles. There is the TCC solenoid. To test it, by the way, you just blow some air through the center hole and the air shouldn't come out anywhere. If it comes out, then it's leaking or it's stuck open. So it's this one bolt and the little uh, clip thing. And that's it. it the electrical connector, the one bolt, and it comes right out. Now make sure your tools are clean as well. Oh, by the way, this is a 10 mil, just like the drain pan bolts. But make sure your tools are clean. Make sure you have a paper towel to set that on. Because that nut, I mean that bolt and the clamp thing have to go back in. While I was in the middle of swapping this out, my camera ran out of storage, so that's cool. But just to reiterate, this 10 mm to this 10 millimeter bolt comes out with this little clip, and then you grab the old solenoid, pull it out, take the new solenoid dip the o-rings in the, in the pan and then you just push it back in put the clip up put the bolts in put the electric connector back on and that's it you're done we're ready to put the pan back on fill it with fluid and fire it up 
All right, so now it's time to put the pan back up. You want to get it in place, hold it up with one hand, and then with your other hand, put a couple of bolts in on opposing sides, finger tight, just to hold the pan up. Then, of course, you get the rest of them finger tight, and you do the old crisscross applesauce to hook them up. You're going to want to grab your favorite funnel. Now that you've got your favorite funnel installed, you just start pouring. Pour that fluid back in there. Now this is only if you've made sure that the fluid stayed clean. All right, so now that we've added a couple quarts back in, let's use a dipstick to see where we're at. Now looking at this, you can tell it's definitely higher than the crosshatch area. So definitely don't add any more. What we want to do at this point is fire up, go for a quick little test drive. So, I'd recommend using Mercon 5, as there's an old TSB from Ford, where all the AOD uh, 40, 470W, whatever, transmissions should be using Mercon 5 now. So as far as testing the lockup goes, I can't do that because my, uh, I damaged the switch when my old lockup solenoid failed. The, uh, it failed short. So the switch that was in here had its contacts melted. So I can't test that right now, but the fact that it's not locked up means the solenoid's holding back pressure and it's working. You know? So what you want to do while you're on a test drive is just try and go through all the gears. That was first, second, we're in third now. That's fourth. Now once you've ran through all the gears, gone for a nice little drive. And then you can come home, or wherever, I mean you can check the fluid level in a parking lot if you really wanted to. But you see I put it in reverse. Just let the passages fill up. And now, either neutral or park, doesn't matter as long as you set the e-brake. Alright folks, well I hope you enjoyed the first installment of this Requiem for a Transmission video series. Next we're going to be talking about my little shifter device here and how it works. Hope to see you then. Ah. 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 Oh. Oh.